very interesting things I've been researching. I went to some of the altcoin channels. There is this guy named Cameron Foos, F-O-U-S. He used to be a day trader. And he talks about all coins and stuff. And what I found to be very interesting with his channel was the comment section. Because he's talking about you can get these all coins, you can make all this money, right? Well, the comment section is saying something otherwise. It's like, yeah, he talks about how you can do this, but he doesn't talk about how you can do it. And uh, I haven't gotten, you know, a few people have sent me some receipts. I haven't dived into it. But I will say, I want to see you buying the altcoin, realizing profit, and transferring the money to your bank account. Because you just buying it, leaving it in Coinbase or whatever, that's not real money. But it got me to thinking. I was watching the Black Hustlers Club. And he's been detailing his journey of affiliate marketing, selling ClickBank products, and his Instagram accounts. And he's really young, he's, he's 21. And he has a video where he made $75,000 in one month between his YouTube channel, his online course sales, and some other stuff. And he's very honest and transparent how he didn't make any money. But also, I saw this. You guys are very fortunate to have this kind of information. Seriously. When I was coming up, there was no internet. There was no, unless you knew someone who could bring you under their wing and school you, uh, there was no Black Hustlers Club. There was no TJ Hustlers. Um, there was none of this. And for him to go from where he was, he also talked about why he didn't go to school on this channel and for him to go from where he was just graduating high school and within two years get to $75,000 in one month is extremely remarkable extremely remarkable and you know it's the power of the internet and if he keeps going on and he invests his money wisely, do to be a millionaire before he's 30. Um, essentially, if he can keep these online sales up to like 50,000 a month, that's like 600,000 a year. And it got me to thinking, I was watching him and some stuff he said when he was working at Hardee's, seven fifty an hour, and then he made his first, um, I think he went to Macy's, when he made his first 200 bucks online, and one day he was out. And this is one of the things that's going to kill most of you young people. Now, I understand you want to work and grind. I understand you want to have your own thing. And, but this whole notion that all jobs suck is going to mess you up. Because uh, the Black Hustlers Club, he was on one. He was working it. He was posting. He was doing. He he has a he has a very good work ethic, very good work ethic. And many people who don't want to 
work a job, don't want to be part of the system, want to do their own thing, make their own money, be free, don't have good work ethics. Simply don't. And one of the things that people have got to look at, because uh, this is part of the, the crypto thing. I can make a lot of money without doing a lot of work. That is the driving force. It's not because of the technology. It is the driving force. It's hot, it's hip, that's the driving force. And uh, I'm gonna make a little thesis. I don't really care what kind of receipts you guys give me. I'm not messing around with crypto. Now, I know many of you are going like, Glennon, it's an easy way to get money. Why shouldn't you? You know, I actually had someone, let, let's go ahead and have this conversation. I had someone disregard what I have built and how I was making money. It's like, yeah, he's making millions, but he's missing out on millions more because he ain't in crypto. I've already shown you the numbers. Less than 1% of the world's population, um, less than a percent, half like 0.2% of crypto millionaires represent millionaires. So it ain't all these folks making all this money. Now, this is my thesis. And I guarantee you, I'm gonna see it with the receipts that the people who made money with crypto had money to begin with. You see this with stock, like uh, the game stock, game stop stock. Someone had 50,000 and turned that into 22 million. He had the 50 thousand and I, I keep seeing this over and over again and one of the false narratives out here is that you're going to make all of this money with virtually no money you're just gonna start like you know someone like hey I put uh, 200 bucks into Dogecoin and now it's like 4,000 in eight months so essentially little investments yield little returns little investments and you know one of the reasons that i am not taking my eye off what i'm doing all right let's take strippers you get a girl she starts stripping. She starts making that easy money. She becomes unfit to do anything else. It's very hard for them to transition into a regular job. There's a girl here on YouTube who's a stripper, Christina Villi August. You, you'll be able to find her. She's got like a million subscribers. People love her. Uh, you know why she ain't stripping? Because she makes more money from YouTube. That is the only way these chicks can transition out of strippers if, if they can transition into something that makes even more money. And Christina, you know, she's had the butt job. She's had the boob job. She's had her nose fixed. And people just love her. They love her on her channel. She got a little phrase, super cute, super, super cute or something like that, right? So based upon and, and the wow success, because the girl was talking about she was making like 15,000 a month stripping and her YouTube channel was making like 20,000 a month. So she was making like 35,000 bucks a month. There is no way in hell she's going to be able to ever work an average job unless she's absolutely forced to, where she's destitute, about to be homeless. And this is one of the reasons I'm not getting on the crypto train because I feel that in the future, I may be wrong on this, but in the future, I feel that there's going to be some bad things that's going to happen with crypto. And if that's the only way you know how to make money, you're gonna be screwed. 
because you will not be fit for anything else. Once again, the video, I've shown you the math. All of the people who got in crypto early, they made money. But it was like a lottery type situation. It wasn't based on any marketable skill sets. And this is where you're going to run into problem chasing crypto wealth. You're going to spend all of your time studying altcoins, looking at where they're going, and you're not going to build any real skills. And when crypto crashes or drops, you're going to be screwed. You're going to be screwed because once again, uh, I've heard the arguments that fiat currency is just a bunch of numbers on the screen. No, it's more than that. Fiat currency is government backed. Fiat currency has a military. And I just have a feeling there's going to be some bad things that are going to happen in the crypto in the future. And if that's the only thing you know how to do, that's the only way you know how to, you know, go to a computer screen, study some charts and flip something. You're going to be at a disadvantage from those who actually know how to build a real business. Like I'm out looking for a location for my car lot. And this is something I found out. Unless I buy a property in Sandy Springs that is already a car lot, they're not going to improve my business license. Found that out. So this, I'm not going to be able to start a car lot in Sandy Springs. And what's funny is there are several locations available that would make excellent car lots. High visibility, but because uh, many, many municipalities have issues with car lots, they don't want them. So it's going to be interesting. But uh, if you saw with, um, I guess there was the stories, YouTube stories. I was out looking at a few spots. It's kind of awakening something into me because here's what I know. I can sit up here and go down the cryptocurrency rabbit hole. I could. I have enough capital where I can make some money with crypto. Let's say I buy Bitcoin for 62K a coin. Let's say I buy 20 coins and they move up 20,000. So that's 20 times 20, that's $400,000. I can do stuff like that. However, just based upon what I've seen crypto do, this is not durable wealth. It goes up, it goes down. And I remember when I had my Bitcoin, and this is one of the reasons I sold my Bitcoin. I was constantly checking because when it was zooming, it was exciting. It was like, wow, man, this is a lot of money. And I became preoccupied by it. And fortunately for me, my business was at a point where I didn't really have to do a lot to keep my business going. But I'm not going to go into the cryptocurrency rabbit hole. Because if I was, I would become unfit to run my business. And there are some of you who realize success. You feel that you got it going on. Okay. What are you going to do when it crashes and you can't make any money with it? What are you going to do? And this is like the stripper thing. A lot of strippers stay in the strip club way beyond their prime because they don't know how to do anything else to make that kind of money. There was a chick on David Never Sleeps and she spent like 10 years in the strip club because she didn't know any other way to make any money. She stayed way too long. So you could go ahead and get into the cryptocurrency waters, knock yourself out, I'm going to stay in the business waters because Elon Musk, 
will never make as much money from cryptocurrency as he did from Tesla. Tesla is what made him a billionaire. Uh, I don't know if Jeff Bezos is in crypto. Don't know. I haven't researched that. And essentially, I once again, I just have a feeling that some bad stuff's going to happen with crypto coming down the road. And many of you who are all on, all in on crypto, and you're not building businesses. And also, let's talk about this. Spendable cash, like going with Cameron Foose. Like, go to Cameron Foose's channel. He's all on the altcoins and check out the comments. Check out the comments. It's very interesting because I feel that a lot of you young people and millennials are lazy. And this is why cryptocurrency is so appealing. So appealing because you're lazy. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to go to school. You don't want to work a job. You just want to make money and have fun. That is not going to have a good end. It's just not. It's just not. And I know I'm like, Clinton, you old. You ain't on the hip current things. And to that, I'm going to say, I got more money than you do. And let's talk about that. Whenever I present that argument against someone who's like, hey, Glennon, you should do this to make money, that I already have more money than they do. And man, that's a piss poor argument. What are we talking about? We talking about money. So it is very funny how many people are sensitive. And like I said, go ahead, jump in the, the crypto waters, knock yourself out, enjoy yourself. And when waters change, when you become that old ass stripper where the tips aren't as good anymore, where you're not making any money, what are you going to do? See, this, this is the reason that a business is superior than crypto. You build a business, you get to control the narrative. Crypto is influenced by so many different things. So many different things. And I don't know why y'all want me to join the crypto club so bad. It's like, Uncle G, we want you to validate crypto. If you feel that you're gonna make all this money in crypto, you should have the confidence. You should have the um, yeah, confidence and do your own thing, because I'm doing my own thing. Like y'all are not gonna convince me to step away from what I am doing that makes millions to do something that may perhaps make money. I, I don't understand. I, I think a lot of y'all don't get that connection that I'm already rich. I don't have to buy crypto to get rich. I'm already living a million dollar lifestyle. I've shown you the receipts and this is something else. Most people in the cryptocurrency world never show receipts. I wonder why. I'm already in a million dollar house, luxury cars, cash money in the bank, eat out every day. I do what I want. So I know that if I stay on this business tip, that will continue. Now, if I get into the cryptocurrency waters and I make some bad bets, I'm going to lose money. You know how much money I have lost in business? I have lost two drones, which represents $4,000 lost when I was running ads. I can't really say that's a loss because I learned some stuff. So this year I have lost 9,000 bucks on earnings of a million. So I am $990,000 ahead. In crypto, I have seen it with options trading. I have seen it with crypto. I've seen people lose their asses. And y'all keep acting like that don't happen. Y'all keep acting like, oh, I'm getting crypto. I'm always going, it's always going to go up. 
the stocks are always going to go up. There's a channel on here was showing people like one guy, he started the year with 600,000. He ended the year with zero. Y'all keep acting like, because here's a fundamental rule of investing. If you have the potential to get a high return, whether it's cryptocurrency, whether it's stock, you also have the potential to lose all your money. That's a very real possibility. I saw someone on the YouTube channel say that no one's ever lost money from crypto. 2017, I know like 50 people who lost money in crypto. Now, if they hadn't sold their crypto and held on to now, they'd been good. But, you know, you could keep buying your crypto and I'm gonna keep building businesses. And let's see who makes the most money. I have a feeling who's going to make the most money because that's what we're talking about money and freedom. I have a lot of freedom, a lot of freedom and I get to enjoy my money and I'm going to start doing some more stuff and I'm going to um, document this journey of starting a car dealership because I got a lot of ideals that are influenced from the internet that you know, uh, there's a guy, he's offered to help me with my car lot, and he is a car dealer. He's been selling cars since 2011, so he's, he's been in the business 11 years, so he's well-versed in selling cars, um, and, you know, he is resistant to new things because he has the money, and he could, like, rent cars, you can buy cars at the auction and rent them and get 50 cars out there and have another 30, 40, 50,000 a month coming in on top of what he already makes. Take him about a year to get there. He could do that. So uh, what I am probably going to do, because essentially I got a lot of stuff to do, because essentially if I find a lot, and, you know, I, I talk about this. Dealing with municipalities is a pain in the ass. Because, you, you know, I, I called Sandy Springs before I, I found this out. And then I also called someone. There is a property here in Sandy Springs that is zoned automotive. And the rent on it is $15,000 per month. It's got like 120 parking spots. Um, the building is way bigger than I need. So corporate citizen. If I get that property, I'm going to have to start two businesses. One business to pay the rent and provide a little additional profit in another bit in the car business. So it will be another business that's using that location. Um, and then it would be the car business and it would be the car rental business. So that'd be three businesses operating at that location. And that's, that's how I'm planning on doing it because I'm going to show you. Because essentially, uh, this property that's going to become available in November, and let's say it'll become available in December. Um, so that gives me May, June, July, August, September, October, November, seven months to build up cash flow. Because this is how I do it. Like, I don't want to take money from the online course business and then use that money to be paying rent for the car business. I don't want to do that. Because essentially, this, this is a lesson. You want to get your business cash flowing as soon as possible. So I got seven months, and my target is to create 30, to forty thousand dollars a month cash flow before I go into that property. So I'll go in that property when a rental car business is doing 30, 40, maybe fifty thousand a month, and then I'll start the car business. Then I will start selling them because I think if I buy these cars and I put them out as rentals and then make what I put into the car from renting it 
and then I can sell it because essentially I already have, um, I got my money back. And then I can put this car out, get a down payment, make even more money. So that, that's one concept I'm thinking about doing. Um, we will see, we will see. We will see, because you know, essentially, all I have right now are a bunch of assumptions. I don't really know because I'm not in the business. And this is one thing. You need to understand that when you're starting the business, all you have is our assumptions. Until you get into the marketplace, until you actually start in the market and start getting real marketplace data, you just have assumptions. So I have a bunch of assumptions right now. But the difference is I know that there are assumptions and I know that once I get in the market, things are going to change. I already know this. So I'm already prepared for that. And, um, you know, it, it's very interesting. It's very interesting because if I can go ahead and create 30, 40, 50,000 a month rental car income, then that's going to give me money to pay rent. Let's say I hit the top of my goal, which is 50,000 a month, right? So that's 15,000 for rent and 35,000. If, if it's going that good, I would put more money in the business. I'll take that 150 and start the rental car business because literally it will take me 150, 30,000 a month. It'll take me 30, take me five months to get my 150,000 back at 30,000 a month. Five months. So what I can do if I can get this started is just let that money sit in the bank. Okay. So then I got this rental car business. I'm doing 30 K a month. Then I move into, and then let's see 30. So five months, seven months, that's 210,000. Just let that sit in the corporate bank account. So I got a business that's generating 30,000 a month. Then I move into it. I've got my 150,000 back and then I start my car business. So once again, that example right there proves that starting a business is more money than investing. And I got like a 10 year plan because in 10 years I'll be 64. And I honestly, I don't know if I want to work like this when I'm 64. I have no clue because I'm not there yet. I don't know what the future has, but I do know these 10 year windows move much quicker than you think they do. So let's say I'm 64. I got a car dealership. It's doing 2 million a year. I have a $10 million. Let's say it'll be $15 million apartment complex that's providing a million a year passive income. And I'm still doing YouTube and still doing this stuff. So we're talking about five, six million a year. And I'm at retirement age. That's crazy. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. So that's how I'm looking at it because like I said, you guys are so fortunate to get this information. You are so fortunate to get this information. Because when I was 32, this information wasn't all over the place. You had to know people, you had to be affiliated, you had to be connected. Um, so for you guys to get this information now is really amazing because right now there's some 20 year olds who are getting this information. They're making the right decisions and they're going to be rich in their forties. And these are going to be folks who are going to have regular jobs. Well, regular high income jobs. Because it's a myth that you can be making $20,000 a year and build a seven figure portfolio in your lifetime. 
you start at 15 and invest for 45, 50 years, okay. But you guys are exposed to ideals and concepts that were not available to me. Weren't available to me. I didn't know this. 32, I got on this journey at 34 years of age. 34, so the last 20 years I've been on this entrepreneurial year journey. And after the boarding house days, it's been pretty good. I've been living how I wanna live. I've been eating how I wanna be eating. And essentially, I'm gonna really start investing in my 50s. You know, my first investment, well, I, long story short, I used to invest in the stock market when it was in the storage auction business. And I had to build up a $1.5 million portfolio. You wanna know how I built it? I was putting half my income in my stocks. That's how I built that one point. It wasn't from gains or interest or, no, it was from contributions. And once I realized that I wasn't really making it a lot of money, I went ahead and sold all my stocks and paid off my SBA loan. So I will be 58 when I start investing. And that's gonna be that apartment complex. That's gonna be my first real investment outside of businesses. It's gonna be my first real investment. And once I get this car dealership built and hire a general manager, get people in there, I'm not gonna ever, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll go to the dealership whenever I want to. I won't have to be there every day because that's how I'm gonna build it. I'm gonna build it to run without me. I'm gonna build it if I wanna take a vacation, I can take a vacation, come back, I got money. So, there, there's a lot of things that are happening, that are going to happen. But for you guys who want to get into crypto, knock yourself out. I'm not going to join you in your crypto games because I feel, and this is where it's disrespectful. Many of you feel, even though you don't have, you can't show any receipts on my level, you feel that you're smarter than me because you can do some crypto magic and at the end of the game we're going to see who has more money and we're going to see who has more chess pieces because essentially i know most of you don't have enough money to make significant investments in crypto i know that and that's why i know that your yields are not going to be that good because you don't have enough money and, you know, yes, there are lottery type moments in crypto where a coin will explode. And if you're holding a lot of that coin, you can make some money. But once again, here's my thesis. You build a million dollar business, a business that makes a million dollars in revenue. And let's say your profit margin is 30, 40 percent. So that's 400,000. That would be better than a million dollars in crypto. Because you can spend that money. With crypto, you can't spend that money. And that, that's another little argument that y'all keep overlooking. Like right now, all of these Bitcoin millionaires, they're millionaires because they're holding for dear life on their Bitcoin. They can't spend it. And they can go out and get a loan against it, which now creates a situation where they got to pay money. So once again, you, you will never convince me that cryptocurrency is better than a business. You will never convince me of that. Like once again, and I've said this before, everyone who bought crypto, bought a lot of coins, they got lucky. These were not financial geniuses. And in the future, if the government bans crypto, what are you going to do? 
What are you going to do? And I know people like it. It's never going to happen. Can't happen. Okay. People are saying the same thing when the government banned gold. Or the government comes out with its own crypto and super, sur surpasses all these other cryptos. So we will see what's going to happen in the next five years with crypto. Once again, because I have a capital base, I have money, I have cash flow, I can start another business, use that money to make more money faster than investing. Like I said, my first, I guess my second investment, because it was in the stock market for a while, but my second investment is going to be that apartment complex because I get me a $15 million apartment complex, that sucker's going to cash flow very nicely. Even servicing debt because I'm going to have a 25%, 30% equity into it. And one guy was talking about apartment complex. He flips apartment complexes. He'll buy an apartment complex. He'll use financing. He'll put like uh, his last flip. He held on to it for five years. He went in at eight million. So he had to put two million down. He financed six. And the apartment recently appraised at 16 million. And he sold it. Realizing an eight million dollar return. Eight million in five years. That's two million dollars per year. Now, I might do something like that. That's juicy. That's nice. But, you know, essentially. And also, when he did that, he owned six apartment complexes. So he had six deals in action. He just flipped that one, realized an eight million dollar profit. And then he's uh, working on the second one where he's going to realize a $6 million profit. Now, I might do something like that. That's nice. Or I may get me an apartment complex, hold on to it forever, and leave it in a trust fund for my hairs. I may do that. But see, once again, I'm already in a position where I can think like that and I can have that outlook. You know, it's different games, but once again, you can keep praying and playing crypto and never learn any real business skills like marketing, learning how to sell, customer service, not learning any real marketable skills. Go ahead, knock yourself out. And when something bad happens with crypto, you'll be like that stripper that stayed in the club too long. You'll be like that stripper. You'll be like Annabelle shaking her booty for nickels, you know, because essentially how you learn to make money, because essentially um, I have a friend whose father was in the dump truck business. His father built this business, literally a hundred dump trucks, and he left it to this dude. So dude inherited this multi-million dollar business. And he said, like, I don't know how to do anything else. All I know is the dump truck business. If I ever lost this, I'd be screwed. This is all I know how to do. Do you want to be in that position with crypto? Because essentially, crypto is only 10 years old. It's unproven. Gold goes back thousands of years as a store of value. So, you know, we'll be having these conversations because essentially, because I am successful and I don't want, I have no problem with the hate, you know, because if I go ahead and piss on your dreams by telling you the truth, at least I woke you up. Uh, there are many YouTube channels that are all about how to buy crypto, the best altcoins, and they're not really looking at, is that the best thing for the average person? Once again, here's my thesis. 
Your name is Steve. Your wife's name is Jill. You both make 30,000 bucks a year. You would be better off starting a small eBay business, a small service business, increasing your income to 78,000 the first year, then investing in crypto, then investing in stock market. You wanna know why? Because you will create spendable cash. You will, you will create cash that has utility. And like, once again, go to Cameron Fuse's YouTube channel and he talks about altcoins and all this other stuff. And they talk about all this money you can make, right? Flipping these coins, right? He doesn't really get into how to make the money. He talks about, uh, he's made like half a million dollars um, since December, but he doesn't talk about how. And see, the devil's in the details. Let's say he made a half a million dollars since December, but he started off with 100K. That's a very important detail. And I had someone challenge me that you don't really need a large trading account to make a lot of money in Forex. And I would wholeheartedly disagree because all of the people that I have seen that were making twenty, thirty thousand dollars trades in Forex had six K, six figure Forex accounts. Every last one of them. So I, I know that you want to believe that you can turn a penny into a quarter in a week. I know you want to believe that, but my research, you need a lot like uh, Terry Ingemolo, uh, she actually confirmed it. Before she created her course and she made that 10 mil, which is incredibly strong, incredibly strong to create a course and make 10 million in a year. That's generational wealth created in one year. And she said, no, her accounts were not that big and she wasn't making that kind of money trading. I mean, she proved my thesis. She made more money from a business than she did trading stocks. Proof positive. Ask her, she'll tell you. She made more money from a business than she did for trading stocks. She made more money in one year from a business than she did her whole time straight and stop. That's kind of remarkable. It's kind of remarkable. So we'll be talking about this and other things as we go along our journey because I want you guys to win and you're not gonna win on lies or you're not gonna win on stories where they don't tell you the full details. And this is one of the things, like, I guarantee you, if Cameron Foos made that kind of money, he did not start off with $5,000. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. I'm already giving you the math. If Bitcoin is to replace gold as a store of value and get 11 million, starts, um, 11 million, 11 trillion market cap, you would need close to $400,000 invested in Bitcoin right now to get to a 3.5 million return if that happens. How many of you got $400,000 just laying around? I got it. But I know that I can take my money and turn it into more money with a business than investments. Fun fact, 2011, 2012, when I made that 1.5 million from selling my book. You know I held on to that money for about five years before I really did anything with it? See, this is one of the things. You quick money hustlers, you wanna get this money to flex, to buy fancy cars, and we're gonna have this conversation. I have a Porsche, I have a BMW, and I have a million dollar house. Did I get it when I could have got it? Nope. I could have been living like this since 2012. But essentially, I have a principle. I don't like spending all my money. I don't like spending all my money. So, 
every time I want to do something, I come up with a plan to make more money. That's the goal, because essentially, uh, I see, you know, we're, we're going to have a lot of conversations about this because um, I, I'm seeing one guy and he's, you know, he's like, he knows someone who makes $40,000 with a million dollar per, I'm like, I crunched the numbers. It ain't plausible. They don't have enough money to have a million dollar portfolio unless someone called in on Dave Ramsey the other day and this guy has a $550,000 stock portfolio at 24. Someone left him $280,000 when he was seven and the money was invested. The money was invested. So he will have, um, when he's 32, if he leaves the money alone, he'll have a million dollar portfolio because it'll double in seven years. But someone left him 280,000 to get started. So, yeah. The details, man. The details. A lot of folks don't want to get into the details, and that's one of the things we do. We get into the details here. So, I'll see you guys in the next one. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Stay tuned.